Welcome to our lecture online. Well, here's our next mechanics problem from the JE main test. And take a look at it. It deals with simple harmonic motion, and this is what they tell us. It's a very short question. When a particle executes simple harmonic motion, the nature of the graphical representation of velocity as a function of displacement is, and they give us four possible answers. So the graph either looks elliptical, parabolic, a straight line, or circular. Hmm. So let's kind of think about it. First of all, let's draw a velocity versus displacement uh, coordinate system. So velocity would be in the vertical direction, displacement in the horizontal direction. So velocity would be in terms of meters per second, and the horizontal direction, x, would be displacement. That would be in terms of meters. So now let's draw a depiction of simple harmonic motion. So let's say we have an object uh, that's attached to a spring of spring constant k. It has mass m and let's say this is the equilibrium point, EP for equilibrium point, and let's say that it moves back and forth, which means it'll go in one direction for maximum amplitude A, and in the other action, direction for maximum amplitude A. Notice when we're at the very end of its motion, at that point velocity equals zero, and X equals A. At the equilibrium point, velocity equals the maximum, and the x equal zero. So we can see that when velocity is zero, we have reached the maximum amplitude, and over here, of course, we can maybe think of it as neg negative a, and when we were at the equilibrium point, when the position is zero, the velocity reaches its maximum. So it looks like there would be a maximum velocity, so it would be v max in the positive direction. Over here, there would be a v max in the negative direction, over here there would be a maximum displacement A, over here a maximum displacement negative A, and so we would end up with something that looks like this. Now here, I drew this as a circle, uh, as an ellipse, but it could very well be a circle. So right away, by looking at that, you realize that you would not have a parabolic shape and you would not have a straight line shape, but it could be an elliptical shape or a circular shape depending upon the values of A and V max, A being the maximum amplitude and V max being the maximum velocity. Now, let's think about it this way. We can use the equation where when we have the maximum displacement, all the energy is contained in the potential energy of the spring. So we have potential energy max when velocity is zero and the spring is, is, is either elongated at its maximum elongation or compressed at its maximum compression, and that should equal the uh, kinetic energy max, and that would be when the object is at its equilibrium point, because at that point we have maximum velocity. And potential uh, energy max would be one-half k a squared when x is its maximum amplitude, and kinetic energy max would be one-half mv max squared, or mv, I'll just call it mv max squared. Now I can relate those two to each other. First of all, I can multiply both sides by 2. And I can say that maximum amplitude squared is equal to m over k times maximum velocity squared, or amplitude is equal to the square root of m over k times velocity. Or again, that would be maximum velocity. Notice that this would represent a circle on our graph if the square root of m over k, if that's equal to 1, then at that point a equals v max and you would have a circle, but only under those circumstances. For all other ratios of m over k not being equal to 1, you would end up with an ellipse. So from that perspective, I would say ellipse is the right answer because you would have that in all circumstances except for one circumstance where this equals 1. Another way of, of looking at it is to look at the equation like this. We can say that the position x is equal to the amplitude times the sine or cosine of omega t. Omega, of course, being equal to the square root of k over m, which is the radial frequency of oscillatory motion. The velocity then, which is equal to the derivative 
of position versus time is going to be equal to the derivative of the sine is the cosine, the derivative of omega t is omega, so it would be a omega times the cosine of omega t. Okay, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this equation by a and this equation by a omega. So with other words, x over a equals the sine of omega t. And here I can say that v over a omega equals cosine of omega t. So now when I square both sides of each equation and I add them up together, I can do the following. I can say that x squared, so let me come up here, because I'm running out of room here, if I square both sides and add both sides together, I can then say that x squared over a squared plus v squared over a squared omega squared is equal to the sine square of omega t plus the cosine square of omega t. And notice that I'm definitely running out of room, so let me get rid of this here. I write that somewhere else. So we said that omega equals the square root of k over m. There we go. Got some more room now. And of course we know that this must be equal to 1. So that means that we have x squared over a squared plus v squared over a squared omega squared is equal to 1. Now notice that this here is an equation of an ellipse unless again, unless omega is equal to 1. So when omega is not equal to 1, we have an ellipse. When omega equals 1, then we have a circle. Which is the exact same conclusion we drew when we looked at it like that. So in either way, it looks like the correct answer is that it's an ellipse, elliptical form of the graph, if omega is not equal to 1. So since that's true for the vast majority of cases, I would say A is correct, but B is only correct under the one circumstance. So, and since a circle is a subset of an ellipse, it's always an elliptical form, it's not always a circular form. And maybe that's the way we can feel comfortable about our answer and move on to the next problem. But you can see that in either way of looking at it, you always come up with the same answer. And if you think of it in terms of that a circle is part of an ellipse, but an ellipse is never, part of, is never part of a circle, then A should be the correct answer mathematically as well. What do you think of that answer? <laughs> All right.